So things have been a bit quiet in the garage recently, um, basically because we're trying to move house and get a place with our own garage. So um, also I've got a bit of a cold, so my voice is a bit weird. Anyway, um, so uh, apologies, haven't been many videos. I've been doing bits on the car where I can. Um, I'll just turn the camera around in a minute so you can see because I've actually driven the car, although I didn't have my video camera with me to record it, which isn't very useful, I know. Um, but uh, yeah, I've, I've finished the brakes, um, they're together anyway, they need adjusting um, again, so I'll show that on the on, I'll record that. Um, and the exhaust has got a mega leak, that's something I need to fix pretty soon. So basically going to be exhaust, um, fixing the leak, uh, adjusting the brakes, bleeding the brakes again, I think there's still air in there in them. Um, and then I will show you what I've just uh, latest purchased from um, JR Wadhams. So as you can see the car's turned around now. Um, I'm not sure if I showed the front last year. Um, but uh, all of the lights have been rebuilt. The front of the car um, has been resprayed. Um, it could probably eventually do the full respray, but um, it's not too bad. <coughs> so the front of it's been resprayed. Um, you've seen the engine before, which has been kind of not restored. I mean, the, the the engine itself is okay, but it was pretty horrible in here. So I've um, taken most of the bits around the engine off and refurbished them so uh, you can see things like the, the power steering reservoir uh, which is there, um, coil ballast resistor has been replaced, uh, reconditioned the wiper motor and the heater fan, um, uh, new re well additional relays so I'll talk about them more but basically I've fitted relays for the headlamps and uh, the dip beam and main beam and also for the uh, electric fuel pump which is down there that's the electric fuel pump um, so there's a, a an inertia cutoff switch and a relay um, and the relays basically uh, shut off the fuel pump but also kill the ignition um, circuit um, so uh, yeah I think I've, you've seen a lot of this before uh, obviously the car has been rewired so um, the, the, all the f electrics have been refurbished that's all working um, <coughs> and then the biggest problem I've got at the moment is and you probably won't be able to see that but the um, the left hand exhaust uh, is blowing quite a lot which isn't good so um, although the exhaust all right I think it's the um, where the down pipes join the the center section of the exhaust so I need to get under to get the car up and look at that um, that definitely needs sorting because you basically uh, the car, I think the car's filling with exhaust fumes, which isn't very good. So that needs to be done. Uh, I'm going to look at that next. Um, as I say, also need to, um, although the brakes work, they're, they're, they're a bit odd. Um, they, it pulls up straight, but um, the, the pedal action's a bit odd. I think there's air in the system, so I need to bleed the brakes. And also the, the rear brakes, because I fitted new shoes and uh, I adjusted them as best as I could, but I think they need uh, readjusting now it's been driven a bit so I'll do that so <coughs> this is the um, latest purchase as well so from JR Wadham's um, set of four new shock absorbers uh, Wadham's do SPACs gas adjustable I mean I don't think the gas adjustable is that important on a car like this but they are uh, that's how they come um, so I've got front and rears because the car, I think it's probably still got the original uh, dampers on it. Um, so these are the, the SPAX adjustable dampers. Um, they come ready to fit, they've got new bushes and everything fitted already. Uh, that's the, the adjuster, so that's how you adjust the, the damping. 
Um, I think looking on the, the forums and things, you probably want them pretty much set at the softest level of damping, but I'll try, I'll play around with that. I mean, I'm gonna fit these probably in the next few weeks. Um, the back ones, the current, the, 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 when I redid the rear leaf springs, the, I took the rear dampers off. I don't know why I didn't replace them, but, um, so I know they'll come off okay. The fronts, I'm not sure how easily the originals will come off. But anyway, um, so I've got front and rear dampers to fit as well. So I'll be doing them in the next few weeks. Um, they actually come with instructions. I mean, they're generic instructions, but um, it does tell you to, I think, start on the softest setting um, and then click them up and try it and see how it goes. But as I say, on the forum, it seems that most people seem to set them to the, uh, the, the lowest level of damping. So actually, before we get on with something, somebody asked me uh, on uh, YouTube about the wipers on the P5B and how you set them up properly. Um, so, uh, you'll see that the wipers actually park off the screen. Um, it's a tortuously clever um, mechanism. So, underneath the wiper arm, there's a, a ramp. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but there's a ramp here that uh, this arm on the back of the wiper wiper arm um, presses against so when the wipers actually come down to the part position uh, the wipers are lifted slightly off the screen to get them over the uh, the screen surround and then they basically park against the bodywork um, it takes a bit of fiddling to get set up because if they're too high or uh, they're not kind of pressed slightly against the bodywork then they'll flap around at speed um, but it does work pretty well on the driver's side. If I can get around, um, there's actually a little pip on the bodywork, chrome um, piece on the bodywork to hold the end of the arm. Um, so I'll just show you the wipers in action and, and show how you adjust the parking position of the wipers. Okay, let's see how well uh, this works. I know the cam, the light's not very good for the camera, but um, so um, I think the wipers work. So the ignition switch has a kind of park position where some circuits come on. Uh, yeah. Okay. So there's the wipers, and they're uh, variable speed wipers. So. That is fast, believe it or not. That is slow, and it's a variable uh, speed, which is quite snazzy for a car of this age. Um, so, if we turn the wipers off, they'll do a little dance. Hang on, let's just move that. So they'll do a little dance and then park. So if I turn them off now, there, and they've parked off the screen. Um, just do that again, turn them on. So depending on where you turn them off in the cycle, um, they either kind of do another bit of a sweep and then park, or just park. Um, you can hear them kind of clack when they park, because uh, that's the ramp on the um, on the wipers. But um, yeah, it works pretty well. Um, they're not the biggest wiper blades. Um, these are the correct size. Um, okay, so. This is the uh, the wiper motor, um, pretty standard. Well, it's generally it's kind of a standard wiper motor. There were different layouts with uh, the gearbox kind of at 90 degrees in line with the motor or flat like this. But um, you know, the motor is down underneath and then the gears are in here and they actuate this kind of, uh, you can see here it's bending around the silver silver thing and that goes into the to the wiper boxes uh, or the spindles it's like um, a flexible shaft with with you know, geared shaft basically a pinion um, but a flexible pinion um, so that goes into the motor there and you can just about see I can there's a nut there um, a knurled nut I don't know what that's going to show up anyway so this knurled nut um, 
there's a knurled rod that goes in and it slides some contacts inside so the end of this um, flexible pinion um, basically actuates the switch so that um, when the motor parks you cut power to the motor but this switch is closed still and supplying power and then when the pinion gets in a certain position which is the park position um, the switch uh, cuts power completely to the motor and, and the wipers are parked so you move this this knurled nut and that slides the set of contacts inside along here so that uh, the park position is right so it's really just a matter of getting this knurled nut which hopefully is showing up uh, in the right position um, you just rotate it it's kind of it's got some indents um, but you can turn it around so that's it those are the um, the wipers and how they work on a P5 um, and P5P okay so some success um, so um, as you can see I have taken the top nut off the damper that goes through uh, through the top of the the damper tower um, and also removed the the bottom bolt uh, which wasn't actually too rusty came off okay um, I think although these might be the original dampers I think somebody has replaced the top bush I'm surprised how good condition that seems to be um, it's two parts um, but it's it's not actually perished Oops. so I think maybe someone's replaced the top bushes on the dampers but anyway um, so the dampers oh, try and lift them out so um, that's the old damper let's just put it on the floor and compare it to the new one okay so um, on the right is the uh, original or the, the, the one I've just taken off the front suspension front left uh, in the middle is the new Spax gas adjustable from Wadhams. Um, very slightly longer, but um, that should that will be fine. And then on the left is the new um, rear damper from Wadhams Spax gas adjustable again. So um, I think the original one may be Woodhead. There is actually. Um, a label on there but I can't read anything um, yeah no idea what that says unreadable um, it's it's not actually that's not leaking that's um, penetrant I put on uh, releasing fluid um, so it's not actually leaking but obviously it's really rusty um, it does actually seem to do some damping. I mean I can push it down quite easily with one foot. Let's see if I can and I can just about pull it up. So actually it's doing some damping still. But um yeah well worth replacing. Okay so we are back at the rear brakes. Um, so I've got the drums on now, um, they just screw on with these three screws and then the wheel holds them on. Um, it's a bit of a battle because it's quite a tight fit with new uh, new brake shoes but um, what you have to do is make sure that the adjuster which is up here uh, is the right way around. If, if, if that's the wrong way around there's no way you're going to get that on. Uh, the drum back on. So um, the drum's gone on. I've tightened up the screws. Haven't tightened them too much. It's fairly, you know, they're fairly tight, but I haven't really tightened them up because um, the, the the drum is held on with the wheel nuts as well. So um, what well, I've just done as well, because basically you know I've, I've removed all the handbrake rods and also um, all of the there's no brake lines on this at the moment. So um, the process that you go through, and I'm going to go through the, the handbrake. 
refitting and resetting the handbrake mechanism in a bit. But the process that you need to go through, first thing is once you've got the drum back on, uh, you need to kind of centralize the brake shoes. Now, uh, the manual says when you're swapping the brake the, the brake pads or brake shoes that you uh, you push the pedal down to centralize them that's no good because I've got no brake lines connected so I've tightened up the adjuster uh, which is just back here um, it's a 7 16th square drive on there so I've tightened that up so that the drums are basically locked up um, so the pads because the pads can move around side you know uh, this way uh, sideways um, so what you need to do is tighten the adjuster up so that the pads are forced out against the, the drum. They should be square then to the drum. Um, and then on the back there are two uh, bolts or screws that come in, they're called steady posts, that should basically stop the, the brake shoe from moving that way. The, the brake shoes are kind of, the springs are pulling them against the steady post. So um, the steady posts are uh, open at the moment. They're, they're uh, not screwed in um, so I'm just gonna now that the the brake shoes are pushed hard against the drum I'm just gonna tighten up the steady posts and um, then the brakes should be ready to have the the, the handbrake linkage reconnected and uh, the, the brake lines and then I can bleed them I may need to just go through this process again once I've got the brakes set up um, but but we'll see see how it performs um, so once I've done this, once I've tightened these steady posts and, and tightened the lock nuts, then um, what I'm going to do then is start on the handbrake mechanism. Um, you need to, the, the manual says the first thing in, in resetting the, the handbrake linkage is to tighten up the, uh, use the, the brake adjuster to lock up the drums anyway. So that's already done. So once I've tightened the steady posts and the lock nuts, then I can get on with the linkage. So that's going to be next. Okay, so this is the back of the brake drum. Uh, this is the adjuster. It's a 7, to seven sixteenth square drive. Um, and you screw that in and out and it pushes the adjusters out uh, against the brake shoes. Um, the, this is one of the steady posts I was just talking about. Um, so this screws into the back plate and pushes or rests against the uh, the webbing on the, the brake drum. Um, so you adjust these once the adjuster is fully tightened up, then you, you, you screw these in so that they're pushing again or, or resting against the, um, the brake shoe and then tighten the lock nut up. Um, so that is all done now. Okay, so um, on the other side of the brake drum, this is the draw bar for the handbrake mechanism. Um, so you can see the this is the rubber boot that we were fitting uh, last time. Um, it just seals the hole. Uh, there is the bleed nipple for the, the brakes. It's got a rubber plug over it. And then the brake line, you probably can't see, but the brake line will come in um, just behind the... Uh, um, behind the draw bar. So um, getting the, the, the uh, handbrake rods um, on to the uh, mechanism is going to be next. Um, you may just be able to see. So um, this is uh, the, um, the uh, compensating arm I think it's called so um, the rod the handbrake rods come from the back and pivot this and then um, the rods go from this t-shaped lever out to each wheel um, it, it's <laughs> quite a complex mechanism it was actually simplified a lot for the p5b um, the p5 was even more complex it had a, a crossbar mechanism so it had an extra rod um, but basically the the handbrake mechanism as you pull the handbrake on it will pull this um, and that will move the rods going across the car to each of the brake drums. Um, it's an interesting mechanism. The um, I think from from what I understand the P4 had a hydromechanical braking system so the, the car before this, the P Robo P4, had hydromechanical brakes 
um, completely. So the front wheels were braked with hydraulics. The rears were um, uh, mechanical. They were rod-based. It seems though for the P5, they use hydraulics for the rear brakes, but they kind of kept a similar mechanism for the handbrake at the back. So um, although the P5 has single circuit brakes, it's not dual circuit, in lots of ways the, the handbrake is the second circuit. So if the hydraulic system fails, you've still got a handbrake and anecdotally people say that um, the handbrake can kind of lock the back wheels up at 30, 40 miles an hour. So um, I think it's quite effective when it's set up correctly, but it is a somewhat kind of Heath Robinson looking affair. Um, this, this, the reason there's this balance lever is this can pivot slightly um, and it's on a rubber bush in here um, so that it basically makes sure that um, the, the rear brakes balance equally, uh, the brake equally, they're balanced. Um, so you know if one rod is slightly tighter than another this should be able to compensate for that. Um, so uh, yeah, so getting these rods on is going to be next. Okay, so uh, this is, we're just now going to go through the uh, the process of reinstalling and resetting the handbrake linkage. So um, this being a P5B, the, the handbrake mechanism, as I mentioned earlier, was simplified compared to the P5. Um, the P5, you seem to start from the rear and work forwards um, to set the handbrake linkage. With the P5B, you seem to kind of do it in reverse, start at the front. So um, you can probably just see this clevis here. Um, this is the end of the cable that goes to the, ha the, the handbrake lever. So um, when you pull on the handbrake, it pulls this cable and you can't see the cable, but uh, I don't have a lot of space. Um, and it basically pulls this, when you pull the cable, it pulls that up. Um, so that is the handbrake actuated, that is the handbrake released. So it's pivoting um, around a point around about here. Um, so what you have to do, uh, and it's not very easy, but um, the pivot is just above my finger, the end of my finger. Uh, I can feel the bolt that, uh, that this pivot lever pivots on. Um, and the way you set it, the first thing you set, and I haven't disturbed this front rod yet, so um, I'm actually going to leave this in position for now um, because, uh, well, it's all, you can see it's not too terrible. I'm going to clean it up, but <coughs> the, um, the, the actual clevis on this rod and the rod itself is not too bad. Uh, it's just covered in horrible mud and or oily muck. Uh, so I'll clean this up, but um, the actual, uh, I mean, <laughs> I didn't show you some of the other ones, but uh, some of these uh, these clevis things had uh, all sorts of things stuffed through them. They didn't have split pins on them. They got bolts. Uh, yeah, the other ones were just a mess. So I've replaced all the others, but this front rod I'm going to leave. So anyway, so to set this in position, the first thing you do is set the handbrake lever um, so that... The, this, the center of this hole here, on this end of the uh, pivot lever, is one inch behind a line, vertical line dropped from the pivot. So if you can see my finger is, my index finger is on the pivot there, uh, and I can't get a hand in to show you, but that's basically an inch from the middle of my finger to the middle of that hole there. Uh, that this split pin has gone goes through uh, well this this point goes through so that is set correctly that's an inch um, that's the front of the car that way that's the back of the car um, and so the 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 center of that hole is an inch behind the center of the pivot point for this lever so that looks okay um, the other thing you need to do and um, I think you can just about see it um, so this is the return spring I'm going to replace this um, I've got a new one uh, just because it looks pretty tired um, but the other thing you need to do is set the distance between this clamp on the rod that the the return spring 
uh, clips to and the centre of that. And uh, I can't remember the exact measurement. I'll put it on on the video. Uh, but that's set correctly on this car as well. So um, I guess that's just to set the tension in this spring and make sure there's enough tension to pull the handbrake mechanism, uh, return it back to off when you uh, release the lever. So that's the second thing that you set. So the first one is that distance being an inch to a, a vertical line to the pivot uh, point. And then the other is that distance there from, from that clamp to the centre of that hole. Uh, so I'm going to leave that for now. I may, well, I'm going to clean these up. Um, and we'll come to, come back to this and we'll get to the, the rest of the mechanism in a minute. Okay. Right, so hopefully, half an hour later, um, you can see a bit clearly now, a bit more clearly now. So um, I've replaced the spring, so we've got a nice shiny new spring on there. Uh, not that it really matters, but um, it was I think, quite cheap from Wadhams, so I thought I'd replace it. Um, that just, uh, this clamps onto the rod, uh, the, the, this main rod here then clips to the chassis or the cross, uh, the subframe there. Um, that distance is set to 184 millimetres. Um, you can see I've cleaned up the, um, the pivot lever and the, the clevis, uh, clevises. Um, I should just say the clevises are basically on the end of the rod. It's kind of a, like a Y-shaped um, threaded thing that is the clevis and uh, so you can screw them on and off the rods to adjust the rod length um, so there are I think eight clevises in total on the linkage uh, one two three four nine I suppose if you include the one on the end of the the handbrake cable um, but you can see um, uh, all I've done is clean this these up and they're actually in really good condition um, Surprisingly, so I mean, that, that tends to be that a, a lot on this car is just really, you know, it's 50 years of of muck and uh, and dirt, but actually a lot of it's really well preserved. Um, I assume that's actually the factory green paint is still on the end of that rod. Um, so I'm not sure the clevises are original, but they're in really good condition. Um, they'll need greasing before car goes back on the road um, something like white lithium grease um, that's going to withstand you know being washed off or, or not be washed off um, and so that is the first part of the linkage done and set and looking a lot better than well a lot better than the rest of the car around it at the moment um, so right on to the next step which is the uh, well the next rod okay, okay so um just thought i would show you one of the clevises uh this is it um off the rod the handbrake rod um you can see it's kind of um it's a clevis it's a, a y-shaped thingy uh that screws on to the end of the rod this end and on the p5b the rods are a quarter inch bsf i think um thread uh very close to six millimeter metric m6 metric but not quite um and um the so that's the clevis and then they have this um screw uh thing that screws in that's got a spring to basically stop the the whole thing rattling and hold it in place so that screws in and that's what pivots on the various levers um so you, know, you can on each rod there's a lock nut so you can um, lock these up on the rod uh, and that's how you adjust the length of the handbrake rods i know on the uh, on the p5 forum everyone says whatever you do don't touch the rods um, because uh, this is a not an easy process well it's not, it's not complicated but it's it's a very time consuming process to go through doing this um adjusting the handbrake um, but as I said on the previous video on my car it was bodged completely so um, a lot of the rods uh, needed replacing and the clevises as well uh, this is actually one of the original ones as you saw a minute ago the front one's pretty good condition um, again you know cleaned up this isn't at all bad 
Um, so uh, this goes on the rod and then um, what I need to do is install, let's just show you that, so I'll move this around, you can see there is this bracket um, which basically bolts to the subframe uh, just there just near where the torsion bars oh, you can't see hang on just near where the torsion bars um, go through the subframe um, and this basically bolts to the subframe and uh, I think it's just stopped to stop the rod rattling around there should be a rubber bush in this which I've got which I'm going to fit um, you can get the replacements from Wadhams uh, and yeah I'm, so I'm just going to refit this bracket it's a bit bent and warped I might try and straighten it out but um, it's really just to support the rod and stop it rattling around because this this front rod is very long it's probably two meters long something like that getting on for a meter and a half um, as I say, the, the P5 had a, um, I think it was called a balance lever that, that, so this rod was actually in two, two there were two rods that, that replaced this single rod on the P5B. So on the P5 there were two rods and there was a balance mechanism somewhere, uh, not quite sure where that fitted. Apologies any P5 owners, but um, anyway it's not on the p5b so you've just got one long rod uh, to the to the relay um so i shall put the bush in that and um, bolt that to the subframe and then we can get on with the relay and then the back of the the handbrake mechanism okay so um that is the bushing back in the the little support bracket so uh this goes um I'm not sure which way around, I don't think it really matters, but that will bolt to the subframe uh, towards the front and just support the brackets and the bushing, I guess, just stops the whole thing rattling in the bracket. So I'll bolt that up a bit later. Um, you can see this is, uh, this rod needs cleaning, but um, you can see the threaded, threaded end, it's about an inch or 25 mil is threaded at the end. Um, this is the next lever that we're going to be uh, setting. So I think this is called the relay, a uh, relay lever, uh, handbrake relay, not sure, can't remember. Anyway, um, so the next thing is to set the length of this rod um, so that uh, I think it's the, basically a horizontal distance again. So from the center of this pivot here to the center of this bottom hole, uh, the horizontal distance is I think about an inch I think it is an inch but I'll check the manual um, you can see there are two holes um, so this front rod goes on the bottom hole and then um, another rod goes from this hole here back to the balance lever I think it is um, on the, the, the mounts on the back axle um, so um yeah i did say this was quite com well quite a convoluted thing but um so that yeah so uh let's get this mounted get this clevis uh set get the the, the distance correct and then uh we can get on with the the next rod